So Chris Eubank Jr. carries Marcus Morrison the full 10 rounds to win a unanimous decision. Uh, firstly, before I get started, guys, I'm actually in my garden right now getting some fresh air. So uh, if there's any background noise, I do apologise. But yeah, let's talk about the fight. Um, we predicted, I predicted that uh, Morrison would probably get taken out around round five. That wasn't the case, but um, Eubank Jr., did actually come close to stopping uh, Marcus Morrison, I feel, on multiple occasions. The fifth being one, um, the twelfth, uh, the first or second, I think it was the second, uh, and also one of the later rounds as well. Um, I think it's fair to say that Eubank Jr. did carry uh, Marcus Morrison. The commentary uh, also picked up on this. And I think it's really to be expected because Eubank Jr. hasn't fought properly since February 2019 when he fought James DeGale. Um, I was actually at that fight. It was a very uh, wicked experience seeing that uh, packed O2. But nevertheless, back to this fight. Hmm. Eubank Jr. was in firm control of this fight and because he was in uh, such control, he was able to fight at really uh, pedestrian pace by his standards. But there were these flashes um, in the aforementioned rounds, these flashes of, of real venom that you'd expect from Eubank Jr. with the explosive uh, combinations, very accurate combinations as well. Um, and obviously you, you, you kind of expect it. He's learning new things under Roy Jones' uh, coaching. So he wants to get the rounds in. Um, it kind of fell into the pattern I think most people imagined of um, Marcus Morrison being outgunned, outclassed in pretty much every uh, every aspect. Marcus Morrison came out in the first round and he actually won the first round on my card because he, he had this pretty nice snappy, not necessarily powerful, but a, a fluid jab that was coming straight out and managing to catch um, Eubank Jr. But he wasn't really able to set anything off of it, um, set anything up off of it. Um, and I think it shows the limitations of a, uh, a Marcus Morrison, who he, he just he doesn't have the understanding of boxing. Uh, I think the education of boxing in the UK, um, I've been quite critical of over the years because I believe it, it sells boxing short. Um, don't get me wrong, there are people, there are coaches in the, in the UK who uh, will prove me wrong. But I think for the most part, the, the boxing IQ, the understanding of boxing theory is it's not as developed as it, as it could be. Um, and as such, he was kind of lost in front of Eubank Jr. because he couldn't set up any punches. And Eubank Jr. is a fighter who likes to pose, he likes to posture and try and uh, get you in, to draw you in and uh, counter with these blistering shots. And Eubank Jr. has had that style even before teaming up with Roy Jones. So on Eubank Jr.'s part, I didn't really see too many differences. Of course, it's still early days in terms of the professional fights he's had with Roy um, in his corner. But he, there were moments where he was kind of holding his hands and kind of positioning his body. And it was almost reminiscent of a Roy Jones Jr. I don't think... Roy Jones, I, I don't think Eubank Jr. has the fluidness of a Roy Jones. Um, one of my main critiques of Eubank Jr. is that he seems a little bit muscle bound. Now, people misconstrue the term muscle bound because you don't necessarily have to have um, excessive amounts of muscle uh, mass to be muscle bound. You can have um, a fairly modest amount of muscle mass like a Eubank Jr., but still be bound because of tight musculature. Um, that restricts his movement and I feel like we see that in Eubank Jr.'s biomechanics. You know, he, he seems a bit stiff at times, mostly at long range. I feel like he's he's more at home in um, up close on the inside in the pocket uh, where he can throw his hooks and his uppercuts and because he feels so relaxed there, it it reflects physiologically in, you know, in his, the fluidity of his motions and you know, he's not so wound up. Um, I've always, 
I don't know if Eubank Jr. is ever going to be able to to shake that. He's very tense, it seems, like a coiled spring uh, when he's at long range. You know, saw it against Saunders, saw it against George Groves, and we've even seen it here against Marcus Morrison. Um, but these have been my long-standing thoughts when it comes to Eubank Jr. Uh, so yeah, he he overall just really he bloodied uh, Marcus Morrison's nose. I feel like he had him stunned from early, and I don't think Marcus Morrison really shook off that 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 state of being stunned. I feel like it it stuck with him. He was probably quite groggy. There were moments though, especially as the fight uh, got into the later rounds when. Eubank Jr. would attempt to have these bursts and Marcus Morrison surprisingly was actually able to punch in between Eubank Jr. And I don't think we've seen that for a while, mostly because a lot of people are so intimidated to even move their gloves away from their head when Eubank Jr. is in full flow. But nevertheless, um, Mar Marcus Morrison did try it and he had some success, but I feel like his shots were just a little bit too wide. You know, Teddy Atlas would say he needs to trim the fat off his shots. I think that's definitely the case um, but nevertheless he showed a lot of heart because he could have been taken out in the second round it looked like he was completely outgunned like most people expected from this fight but he tried he, he stayed in there um, and he gave it a real go he was just outmatched um, but yeah Eubank Jr. still has a long way to go I think I heard uh, during the broadcast <clears throat> that he was saying about uh, give me a, a few more months he didn't say this to the camera he was saying this to someone off camera but you could just kind of hear it in the background and uh, for a few more months i think he needs quite a few more fights before he gets in with a, the top middleweights or super middleweights um i still believe that gennady golovkin beats uh eubank jr and probably beats him fairly handily i know eubank jr is Eubank Jr. is a formidable opponent up close in the pocket but before you get to that pocket you have to you know you have to earn your right to get there and you earn that on the outside and Eubank Jr. he's very basic on the outside in this fight and in other fights we've seen him rely on a single jab a double jab maybe a triple jab or a quadruple jab if he's feeling frisky and that's just not enough don't get me wrong the basics work but how do you build off of those basics? Um, the likes of a Golovkin, he relies on the basics, you know, a, a basic jab, but it's his theory and his intelligence behind it, which I'm not entirely sure Eubank has. Um, and as such, I feel like Eubank still has a long way to go. Um, so I guess we have to see who the next opponent will be. I'm not sure if any names were mentioned. But, excuse me, we, he, he gets the win, nevertheless, against an overmatched and outgunned opponent, but he has been out the ring for a long time, so uh, I, I think it's, we can give him a pass. And he, he won probably all but two rounds in this fight, and he, as I say, he obviously carried Marcus Morrison. But yeah, nevertheless, that's, uh, these are my thoughts. Uh, while well, the fight's still fresh in my head. Time to get back to the card and see where we're up to. Uh, this is just before the main event. So, um, yeah, guys, if you like my take on this fight, give me a thumbs up. If you want to discuss the fight, uh, drop me a comment in the comment section below. If you like the channel, uh, why not subscribe and uh, get some notifications whenever I upload. But, yeah, thanks for listening, guys.